Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And before I start the show, I just want to do a shout out to the folks at the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, uh, and you can become a member of the AREI, we call it. But why I'm telling you right now is that the 2018 dates for the annual symposium have been released, which is September 14th through 16th in Scottsdale, Arizona. Now this past year I was one of the speakers and I loved it and it was sold out at just over 500 people and we are recording this episode mid-December in 2017 and there's already over 200 people registered for the event. So it's a great place to meet like-minded people, find out cutting-edge information about the afterlife, how you can get in touch with your loved ones, um, what's going on in the world of science and medicine, and and learn about grief and so much more. So afterlifesymposium.org is that website. So on to the show. I'm pleased that we get to speak with Rachel Kirkland, who is known as the modern shaman. Now, a shaman is someone who acts as a bridge between the physical world and the spiritual world. As a modern shaman, Rachel is able to see and experience the unseen world around and within us and use her psychic gifts to translate what she sees. Rachel has a master's degree in education and she travels the globe teaching and hosts workshops for psychic development at all levels. She also hosts her own YouTube show and does live weekly uh, questions and answers on Facebook. She has been awarded the best female medium in the world in the 2016 World Paranormal Awards. Her website is themodernshaman.net. So a warm, heartfelt hello and welcome, Rachel Kirkland. Welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you so much. That was quite the introduction. <laughs> I know. Hard to believe you're as fantastic as you are. I get the same thing when I'm on radio shows, but you've done a lot and you're you're really passionate about what you do and I'm so excited we get to find out more about you. So welcome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me. Yeah, no problem. Where does your story begin? I mean, back in the day, were you a kid that was always interested in this sort of thing? Or maybe tell us a little bit about your, your backstory. If you would. My backstory in this lifetime, I, um, you know, so my father is Cherokee um, and, and my mother was in terms of just family dynamics, um, Christian. And so my family dynamic was always very open in terms of spiritual understanding. That's great. Uh, and yes, I think that has a lot to do with how young um, I kind of stepped into my gifts because in my work, I see a lot of people that recognize um, their connections to the other side or have experiences as a child and then shut those down. And so I did that for a while, but as a child kind of growing up, um, the traditional kind of native culture is very open to an, energy of kind of wonder and, uh, the mystical experiences of life. And, um, I learned very young how to meditate. My father was a huge, still is big meditator, which they wouldn't necessarily call it meditation, but they just, you know, would sit in silence and he would have different breathing techniques. I mean, he taught me those kind of things as a child and as a child, just wanting to spend time with him. That's how we would spend our time. That's great. Yeah. And so there was a lot of um, kind of practices and ceremonies and things that were just that were not necessarily registered as a child as something out of the ordinary, but became part of my regular practice of how to handle life and how to process. And, you know, even when I would have a strange dream or a nightmare, there was always a sense of openness of like, hmm, and what does this mean? And, and do you feel like there's symbols behind these things you're seeing? And there was always this sense of open discussion Um of an awareness that spirit is not just uh, in the the physical world, that there is a world that is non-physical and just being open to that. So I didn't necessarily know how to language the psychic part of things um, because as a child, I used to get premonitions every day, all day. I just, that's part of kind of how I saw the world in my head. I just would see it 
very quickly, you know, just like a little snippet of deja vu or something like this. And then it would happen, but it was constantly, you know, I don't know. I mean, not constantly, but probably like 15, 20 times a day. And it would be little things, you know, someone washing dishes or someone, you know, a grade I was going to get on a paper from school or something like this. And, and they were so normal that I had no idea that not everyone lived at, you know, that way in their head. I had no idea that it was something that was different. I just thought this is the normal. way. Yeah. Yeah. Normal. You know, you don't know. Oh, and that's so child, great. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't really even say it. I wouldn't typically share those things unless something bad was about to happen. You know, if I saw somebody cut their finger with a knife or something, I might say like, Ooh, don't do that. You're going to cut your hand. But you know, coming from a four-year-old or five-year-old, they didn't typically really validate that information. And so, um, this is another thing I see play out with a lot of people that, um, are seeing or experiencing non-physical interaction. They don't necessarily get the outside validation because they don't have really the languaging to say what's going on, um, or what they're experiencing. And I, I would just say, Oh, I saw it in a little dream, a little flash. And then it just happened, you know, or I would say something like that. But typically, I didn't even know I needed to explain to people, hey, this was a premonition and this just happened and you better beware because you're going to break your arm or whatever. I I wouldn't. Instead, I would just say, hey, don't do that. And then people wouldn't listen. And then I would end up getting very frustrated with those things. So part of my process became this um, balancing within myself of how to communicate and how to be OK with pe- other people's free will and you know, a frustration of seeing things and not, not knowing when to explain and all of that, um, that kind of eventually balanced out later when, um, I was in my, I would say early twenties, I took a psychic development class. I literally just took like psychic development 101 and, (laughs) and, it just gave language or definitions to things that had always been going on in my head. It gave me a lot of clarity. Um, and the teacher right away saw my gifts and validated them and said, you know, you should come out. She did a lot of missing person work. And so she invited me on cases and that's where I started as a professional. Eventually she got sick and dropped out and kind of sent me all of her cases and all of her work. So that's predominantly what I did at the beginning. And then I moved more into my roots and kind of standing into myself in terms of what I wanted to do, which is also inclusive of teaching and healing and all of that kind of stuff. Oh, you're missing persons work. Could you tell us just a little bit about that? I don't know too much, but were you able sure. to tap into energies and help solve cases and things? Yes. Um, so for the first probably about seven or eight years, I did predominantly homicide, missing person and kidnapping cases. And um, just because that's where my teacher was. And that's kind of what I started into. It's not, um, it's a very different energy um, within the non physical world. It's, it's a very intense energy. It's a very family center. Typically, I was hired by families. Um, Sometimes, law enforcement would work with me sometimes not so much sometimes um they would be offended or or, you know it just it just depended there were certain not everybody's open to this yes yes i'm sure you know yes and uh especially in that in the law enforcement um yeah there's just a lot of so it's a little it's it it's a tricky thing there's a lot of law involved it's not just simply finding someone if there's missing person or whatnot, because sometimes we would find evidence, but we couldn't get the warrant or, you know, there would be a sense of like it's on personal property and therefore the the cops would have to intervene. And if they wouldn't willingly intervene with just a psychic's intuition, then there would, it's, it didn't always end up the way that we wanted, but I think um, there were many people found um, I don't talk about individual cases just out of no, respect, respect for the family. Sure, sure. Yes. I get it. Um, but I think most of all, my heart for what I was doing is I realized in the end, I just wanted resolution mm-hmm. for families. And, um, and sometimes, it, as frustrating as that may sound, 
sometimes the law is not doesn't necessarily work towards resolution. They have such a very systematic approach that they have to follow, you know. And so, um, it the times that were very clean cut and simple. Typically, I was working with families outside of the U.S., like Mexico City. I did a lot of kidnapping cases and, and work there and um, with very positive results, wonderful, uh, you know, times being reunited and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I do it a little different. I, I, my process is a little different than typical psychics. I remote view, so I go into the person's body, um, it, which sounds fancy, but it's really not. It's just <laughs> connecting with someone so much. So, you know, these terms, they sound all like, Oh, heebie jeebie, but they're, they're really, they're really not. I just connect so much. So with the person that I'm able to go into their form and that's it. In the shamanic community, it's called second sight. And, um, and then look from behind their eyes and kind of try to find where I am or what I'm experiencing. But I do the same thing with clients um, that are just trying to like understand a relationship. I may go into their boyfriend's body and say, this is what I see and what I feel when I look at you or, or when you had this fight the other night, this is what I was thinking or whatever, <laughs> you know? So the process is, is kind of used in a lot of different ways. That's amazing. Well, I, I just really applaud you and thank you for all the work you've done helping people because seven or eight years to be actively involved with that and helping families heal is a pretty big deal so mm. that is now moving on from that what where were you where'd you go next and when did you start calling yourself a shaman i don't know too much about uh being a shaman some people say shaman mm -hmm. i know that mm -hmm. i had gone on a retreat once and i had a uh, I don't even know what you called it i spent an hour with a, a shaman and it was absolutely amazing the the visual things that I saw and what she knew about me and my life. And I thought, mm -hmm. what the heck is this? You know, and so I don't really know too much, <laughs> but how, if you can talk a little bit about that and how, how that ties in with your journey as a psychic. Sure. Sure. I think just like all people, we, we're always kind of trying to step into our sense of self and there's a lot of layers to the self. You know, um, I think traditionally when I started out, I started out more in the psychic community and the, just like I said, with the missing person work and homicide work and kidnapping stuff that my techniques and the way that I did it just very intuitively, very innately and organically, I, I did that in a way that, um, I would call more shamanic, like, like energy melding. And, and again, these, these terms are just, it's different semantics for different cultures that you're within, but the, essence of it is just blending energy or connecting so much so with another individual or a soul or tapping in to kind of the cosmic form of connection um, so much so that you're able to help in different ways. So when I started to kind of actually when I had children because I have three kiddos mm -hmm. I realized I couldn't work the way I was working because with kidnapping and especially you're kind of on call 24 seven. If a kidnapper calls or something comes up in the case, it's very, um, on, in the moment, you know? Yes. And so, especially because I did stuff all over the world, they would be calling at three in the morning, like they're, you know, the kidnapper on the other line and they're trying to negotiate. It's a very intense, um, energy that requires a lot of, of just time and focus on it. Um, and so I just couldn't give, that much when, um, I had kids. So yes. I said, I need to do a nine to five. I need to have something that has business hours. And, um, and at that time I also wasn't, I wasn't, I was not doing that financially. I wasn't asking any money. I felt the energy just wasn't, it was very different. I didn't feel, um, comfortable as it, as a working, I don't know. I didn't feel comfortable asking families for money basically yeah, in that position. Um, and, so I had to do something that felt a little bit more, you know, like a regular job. And so then I moved more into just traditional psychic sessions, you know, sitting. And yet I found my natural intuitive way was also to in be very inclusive with energy healing. I kept telling, you know, I kept telling people, oh, you've got to cough this up. I see an energy ball right here. It's stuck in your throat chakra. And it just became way more inclusive of and not typical psychic readings. And so, 
um, I just started including more and more of my kind of family dynamic of the earth and the elements because a lot of times I would feel like, oh, people, they, you know, I would be sitting with someone and I would notice they they were floating out of their body. And so I'd say, hey, you need to hold on to these bags of dirt. <laughs> you need dirt. You need grounding. You need elements of like, you know, or pull some stones in. And it just very innately, that would be a way that I just n- – felt very natively wanted to heal and bring someone back down. And then because I could see their spirit, I would see their spirit come back into their body and ground back in. And so just very, you know, regularly I started kind of just adding those things in. Um, And so the sessions were not typical psychic sessions. So I found myself having to explain to everyone at the beginning, I do this different and I'm not just a typical psychic. And I also include the elements and I also, and then I thought, gosh, by the time I needed to brand something, I thought, you know, and actually come up with a name for what I do. I said, you know, I just need to include that shamanism in there because it's very, it's very all inclusive of whatever I feel like spirit comes through. And, and, um, if, like I said, they're, when I'm talking with someone, um, and they need more physical healing, or I'm noticing that the, anger or the resentment that they've been holding or the fear is now materialized in the physical form, then I, a lot of times, become more of a shamanic healer and step into that role and just heal from that perspective. And then we can talk also about the the things in this realm, in the 3D realm that are also going on. So just depending on the client, I feel like, um, like we all do, we play many roles in life, and I feel like whatever is for the highest good of that client in that moment, I just ask to come through and be and be relevant. Mm, so great. Uh, when you say you look at somebody and you can see their spirit, what does that mm-hmm. look like? I mean, are, are, is our mm-hmm. spirit like bigger than our body? Is it, I mean, it might be yeah. hard to explain, um, but we all think, or I think, you know, that we're a human being and then somewhere deep inside of us lies our spirit, you know, our soul is this little teeny thing. But I, I get the feeling from more people I talk to that our soul is, our spirit is, is so much bigger than who we are. Um, yeah, I think it, it's many things and it can be small if we desire to shrink it and feel small and that's more relevant or it can be incredibly expanded or we can, you know, when I see it's, it looks different for every person, but for me, it typically looks like, um, you know, when you look at a, (laughs) at a light coming through a window and there's dust particles. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of looks like that. It kind of looks like moving little particles of energy and there's various colors some of them almost stem out really clearly, almost like a snowflake. Like they almost have very patterned energy. If they're in a sustained, uh, like if I'm healing someone in there in a sustained kind of trance, like kind of energy where their frequency is kind of, um, balanced, they may have almost sharp kind of rays of sunlight kind of coming out that I see. And there may be certain areas in that form, um, that, shift and kind of have an undulated, almost amoebic like feel and look to them. Now I feel it. I can physically feel it moving and have, it has that sense of, um, fluidity to people's spirits. And sometimes, um, when I see them, they, they have a almost like human type of form. They like, they, they literally almost like look like it's a little chalk outline, (laughs) Uh you know? So it just depends on the person and how really in that moment, how they're expressing themselves spiritually. If they're talking to me and they're really passionate um, and their energy, it almost feels like it's shooting out. Like I can see it in, in not arrows, but almost like, like sunlight. Oh, that sounds so great. It's a, just a great visual. And I love that you have been tapped into all of this, even though you might not have had the language for it from such a young age that, mm-hmm. you know, it's probably just second nature. You just say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done, and it just shows up there for you. Hmm. It is. It's definitely something that, um, like in the workshops that I teach, there's definitely a technique of being able to explain what is going on in your head, you know, or heart or what you're feeling and, and all of these things. Um, I've gotten a lot better at, like you said, languaging it because, 
it's so innate. That's the thing uh-huh. is that when something it's like trying to explain how to breathe, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so much harder to language what you're experiencing. And I think the people that, um, I think that's, that's something I've had to work, work on. And I think with those, when I am teaching teachers or teaching other shamans and healers or helping them kind of up level, there's a sense of kind of grasping and even understanding yourself what is going on in that non-physical world that you're always connected to and always experiencing, but you've never really had a language for the non-physical experiences. Mm, this might be a, a weird comparison, but I remember when I learned to drive a car, it was a stick shift. And mm-hmm. like my dad or mom, they just always knew when to shift from one gear to the other. And I'm like, how do you mm-hmm. know? They're just like, well, you hear it, you feel it. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? And so, you know, when <laughs> I would try to shift, it would just really rev up the engine and then finally like it now I still drive a stick shift it is just second nature I don't even think about it but it's, it is like well how do you put language on something that you feel you know yeah so I think it's great now how about um your work as shaman and psychic does that include medium are you able to tap in and see people's loved ones yes um very much so so you know, I like that term shaman because it is so inclusive and throughout different cultures, shamans have been perceived in different ways and been uh, expressed in different forms. Like sometimes shamans are mostly medicinal and they work a lot with plant medicine and herbs and things. Yes. I don't do I don't do that unless spirit brings it up and says this person needs you. You need to put some myrrh on their, you know, uh-huh. right arm or something unless they literally. And that's more like just channeling healing. But um but there's just a sense of I just connect at my highest vibrational space to connect, and then we can go anywhere from there. There is no, there is no sense of limitation with spirit. It's it's infinite. And so, if I'm honing in and specifically being a medium, um, then yes, that's very much available. And obviously, I do that. I did that a lot also with the missing person work and homicide work. And it's funny because. I oftentimes would have to ask a spirit, are you past? Because I don't have a sense of death to a timeline. You know what I mean? I, I feel like there's just this, just like your show, we don't die. There's mm-hmm. a sense of it's infinite. And so I can be talking to a spirit. And also there's no sense of time on the other side unless they want to give me a sense of timeline, unless someone is trying to communicate a timeline to me. But I don't feel time like that. And so... A lot of times, if I am, you know, acting as a medium and translating, I would have to say, like, okay, are you still presently on the earth, or are you in physical form at this moment um, because of that? But, yes, I mean, being a medium and helping translate, a lot of times, um, I love those sessions because, first of all, a lot of a lot of it is confirmation of what people already know and a sense of, like, just always having access to that individual. And when they come through, like I had a session the other day and um, it was one of those sessions, everyone's a little different, but it was one of those that where they said, I want a dry reading, what, what's called a dry reading, you know, and they sit and they don't tell you anything. They don't okay. want to, they, you know, people, <laughs> so everybody's different. Some people would like to explain it and then give insight and others. She just said, I just don't want, I just want you to tell me whatever comes through. Okay. Um, and, Typically, as a medium, I have very strong psychic guidelines where I have learned I only invite spirits in. I don't just leave myself open. I I call them by name. I say only those that I direct to come in can speak and only those that are in vibrational alignment with this person and higher and all this stuff. I kind of have these strong psychic guidelines. And um, But I kept seeing this form (laughs) just standing there waiting to talk, waiting to talk. But because that individual said, I don't want to tell you anything and I don't want to give you any names and I don't want to invite anyone in, I just said, well, there's just someone here that's standing there, but then I haven't invited them in yet. So she said, well, okay, you can, you can invite them in. And so I started talking, it was her grandmother. And so she started and she was really vivacious and uh, showed herself to be Sicilian or, or, you know, she had this real strong uh, (laughs) kind of personality. Mm -hmm. 
And then afterwards, the first thing that she, you know, after the session was over, she said, well, I just want you to know today was my grandmother's birthday, you know, and, so she started going. and it's funny because the grandmother didn't say anything about her birthday, but as soon as she mentioned that, you know, there was this sense of like, just her grandmother being like, yes, where's my balloons and where's my, you know? yeah, <laughs> it was funny. Oh, I think for me, um, the evidential mediums are just so great, you mm-hmm. know, and some aren't, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, I, I was just on a webinar a couple of days ago and my mom says something funny because I know there's good mediums and there's some people that are con artists, but she's like, what do you call the guy that's the bottom of his graduating class in medical school you know and the answer is doctor right so people can have the title but doesn't necessarily yeah. mean they're good and it can be so frustrating because people you know a lot of people spend a lot of money or they you know they yeah oh, nobody Very wants true. to be con nobody you know it's it's you've grown up with this but I'm somebody who came from like a skeptical point of view so I didn't openly mm-hmm. say you know this is what I was investigating but you know it's everything people have got sometimes to actually book an appointment with someone who calls themselves a medium and then mm-hmm. you know I know no there can be disappointment so I think it's so important to do research and that's why I like talking to people on my show and you can get a feel for who they are and you know if it's somebody you yes. gonna trust and, and things like that yes yeah and I think um it's funny because it's something a lot of people are embarrassed to ask around about. But yes. that's the best way is to find out, you know, person to person, like who people recommend, like somebody that you look up to spiritually or trust or feel in alignment and resonance with spiritually. I mean, that's just word of mouth is almost not that they, I mean, but that's what's great about like YouTube and things like this. You can get a sense of feeling people's personality and how they would do that type of reading and what that energy would feel like in a session with them versus just um, like when you say research, I think, yes, like this type of research is so good. Like hearing someone speak about it and, you know, feeling um, where they come from. Cause like an evidential medium is very different than what I do. I typically don't even ask names, but evidential mediums are real. Like, you know, they'll come at, um, I have a friend of mine that I work with a lot and he's a evidential medium and very, very, that's like his one singular focus. And that's the first thing that comes out of his, his, um, mouth is typically their name and how they passed away. And so it's just a completely different energy. I feel like if you're coming, like you, you're saying from your background or a scientific background or an energy that just like in order to break your own ice you know, or to break your own sense of openness that you need that first. I think evidential mediums are fantastic for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I think any way, though, that somebody can come through and you know in your heart, you know, like this is information no one else could know. know? Right. It's just such a very special and healing thing. Well, it's funny because even in there, but you're still, when you walk away, you're still given the free will to believe or not believe. Right. You know, I mean, even if you're given a name and a date and all these things, like, you know, there's times that that, those type of things came out with me, like names and dates. And there's sometimes it's still, I'll still have a person, you know, message me two weeks later, like, but can I, how do I know? How do I really, really know? And I'm like, you just have to decide. You just have to, I mean, it ends up being your choice. Because no, it, and it doesn't seem to. I mean, and literally, I have had, I have had past loved ones uh, that went in a mediumship session where he was a firefighter, and he literally like, during the session made the fire alarm go off in her building, and like was doing all of this stuff and very physical. Uh, I, I've also had um, a, a loved one, a father drop coins out of a bathroom stall for his children because he, they wouldn't, they were like, they wouldn't, they had, we had a family session and they just couldn't grasp it. And he said, I, I'm going to, I'm going to bring coins out of the toilet in your school. And he did. <laughs> and still, they still are like, but you know, you, you still have to deal with your own internal acceptance or, and, and nobody can really kick that for you. What do you think that's about Rachel? That little, voice in our head that is skeptical that doesn't want to believe that that wants to believe that you know is that a lot of people call that our ego um but you know i call it the inner critic or the voice you know because it's not mm-hmm. always our champion it's not always saying 
empowering things to us. You know, we could be witnessing a miracle and then Mm -hmm. five minutes later, it's like, no, that was no big deal. (laughs) That's so true. It's so true. And all miracles can somewhat be explained in a scientific way because they're in, it's so true. I mean, even like the coins, like out of the toy, you know, somebody, it just, they weren't there five seconds ago. There's always still a way that you can. And to me, I, I just think it's fear. I think the core vibrational energy of that is fear. And it, it manifests in different ways for different people. I mean, there's different veins of that fear of if, you know, say if they agree or if they accept this, then they feel like they're opening a door that's scary to open, that's fearful to open, which means, you know, there's life after life or there's things going on that we're not aware of or there's or the spirit world is able to interact with this world or something that feels fearful to them on some level, whether they're conscious of it or not. I think that uh, inner critic or whatever you want to call it, that little, it's a little voice of fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And anytime there's this, the unknown, you Mm -hmm. know, I think instead of being all excited, like something great could happen, it'd be like, it's, it is fear that shows up first. I mean, I know Mm -hmm. that. And whereas Mm -hmm. so many times there's something great could happen. You know, I think for all of us, and you probably agree, if we can, like left to my own devices, um, like there's nobody in my daily life, very, very few that I can talk to about this stuff, you mm-hmm. know, but then I get mm-hmm. on a call with you or I go to the symposium or I've got a Facebook group. We don't die listeners. If anybody wants mm-hmm. to join that, we're all awesome. talking about the same thing. And it's like, oh, everything's just flowing and everything's normal. So I encourage people to have people around you that you can talk to about this even if they're not in the flesh being part of a group going to a conference taking one of Rachel's workshops you know whatever that is you're free to explore you're free to learn and like the stuff that in in the past might have been fearful to talk about it's like you're free and there's just such a great sense of of, um, I don't even know what it is euphoria or just being being Mm -hmm. at home it's really like being at home I found my people that sort of thing it's so true. And I, and that may seem simple, like, oh, a Facebook group or something, but it is huge. huge. I cannot tell you how life transforming that is for so many people who have felt so alone in these thoughts or their mystical experiences or something that they have never been able to explain or they're fearful to share because of judgment or it's so common. It is so common. And maybe because of the line of work that I'm in, I feel like it's incredibly common. It's like the first thing people say is, I can't tell anyone this, but... (laughs) Yes, yes. But, yeah, finding a group like your Facebook group or, you know, doing something that feels like there's a sense of safety to that, it it can be literally life-transforming for people. Mm. Something as simple as a Facebook group. Simple. Well, speaking of Facebook, you do Facebook Lives, and they're all recorded. So I was on your your Facebook page this morning, and I'm like, oh, they're all recorded. So if you can't actually be with you, is it every Saturday that you do them? Yes, unless I'm working at an event. Um, But, yeah, every Saturday at noon Central Standard Time. So, um, and those are great. You can just get your questions. I don't do live readings. Yeah, People okay. always ask that um, because, to be honest, it gets very, it's it gets very personal. Like, uh, sure I it think. does. <laughs> yeah, you don't need the whole world experiencing some things that come through. I get it. But all the spiritual questions of like, is this normal? And should I be going through this? Or what? Is, what? What in the world is this? Or you know, um, questions. Just I love it. And in it's terms free, of the non-physical world, free. it's always there. Yeah, it's great yes. that you offer that. And then it's another thing. You get to know you. It really, there is a sense when you meet somebody, and everybody's got it. Um, you, know, you get the good vibes. You get the kind of weird, crazy vibes. You know, and I've yes. I've talked to plenty of people, and I just know whether, like, this is resonating the truth or, you know, not. <laughs> I'm not going to yes. use the word I'm thinking of. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, and so it's just a, a way to get to know you. And then you also have a YouTube channel yes that I looked at this morning huge and I feel like a lot of people that resonate with the YouTube channel it's a lot about how to um, kind of integrate your connection so it's a little bit more how to or people sending in questions that have to do with um, you know how to protect themselves from psychic energies if they feel like um, 
they're getting nightmares or they're not comfortable with certain things or if they're seeing spirits, what do I do or how do I communicate? So there's a lot of just kind of how to or kind of um, definitely not as in depth as like my workshops would be, but there's a lot of just kind of, kind of general information about making yourself feel comfortable with the non-physical world and how to integrate it into life. You know, we haven't had a lot of examples over history of integration. It's like the spiritual guru has always been on the mountaintop or in the monastery or they've separated themselves from like, how do you live and have a normal job and be a mom and how do you do that? And then also have this sense of uh, connection that's constant to the other world and how do you integrate those intuitions when they're say, turn right, don't turn left or, you know, whatever it may be, have that conversation with your boss or don't say it this way. Just very integrated forms of, of living from a non-physical and physical standpoint. Mm, it's so important because I think there's a lot of us that are not born with it or we don't know about it. I think we're, we're all divine souls and we all can yeah. tap in different ways. But it's like we're all a diamond and we're, you know, getting polished now. And we're just entering, like, how, how do we do it? So it's nice to have somebody that we can ask the questions to and, and learn. Because, you know, I personally think um, that when we experience the loss of a loved one, when we're experiencing grief, it can either, you know, kill us inside and make us shut down. Or it has the potential of transforming us and giving us mm-hmm. life. I mean, really, you know... Um, even though I, I got involved with searching for the afterlife before my dad died, it was after when that he did that I really started digging, you know. Mm-hmm. And so suddenly once you start digging, you start finding. And like this whole world has opened up that has really given me life. So I think there's a lot um, of us that really want to learn more than we want to be the best human we can be. And gosh, yes. if we can tap into the spiritual side and the psychic side, gosh, that's fun. I mean, really Yes. And I, I mean, I have that, I I do believe one of the seminars that I travel and teach is called, you're just as psychic as me. And it's just a two hour little (laughs) seminar, but it's, it's making people aware, you know, we call this clairvoyant or we, you know, clairsentient, clairaudient, all of these, we call it things. But when I go through that seminar with people, I feel like everyone comes away going, wow, like, I didn't know that my, you know, knowing someone was about to call and then they just call or having experiences. I feel like everyone has had these, this sense of I'm connected to something bigger or just, you know, as a kid walking down the hallway and feeling like there's someone here there, I, and not wanting to turn around. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you run through the hallway. There's a sense of awareness of non-physical energy. Um, and I feel like a lot of people have had those experiences and when they, realize it doesn't mean that you see it like I do, but that's so much a part of with this type of education. It's a, it's a learning how you are. It's, it's totally different than our typical form of education, which comes from the outside in. It's an inside out. So it's very much a a self discovery of like, this is how I've always been. This is how I've always seen things. This is how I've always processed information, or this is how I've always made my decisions. And yet I never really knew that that was quote unquote psychic or I never knew that that was a typical healer or how my body was learning how to balance itself Mm -hmm. energetically. Um, and it's more so about that, not so much how I do it, but learning how you do it and then empowering yourself to sustain it, to keep those lines of communication open to your past loved ones or to actively have a sense of, okay, I can actually channel this. I can sit down in a notebook and I can have a conversation you know, it doesn't have to just be in my head and, and, and just techniques and things like that to realize, like, it's you doing it. It's you the whole time. And it's usually so innate and so natural for people. They miss the forest for the trees and they think it's going to be difficult and they think the voice is going to sound like a booming, you know, sky, you know, to God from heaven, like, hello, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> like they can't be, it can't sound like their own voice. I'm like, why would spirit use some difficult, just, yeah, they're going to use the simplest, most effective, efficient way to speak to you. And if that sounds like your own voice, okay. <sighs> you know, there, there's, <laughs> right. it's like we make it so difficult. And so, so much of it is kind of like rem- learning how you already know these things and how you already have those forms of communication going, um, you've just never validated them or given a sense of confidence to it because our typical education is learned outside in. It's not learned right. innate. I just got this image of somebody throwing a handful of flower seeds on the ground and they're all different kinds of flowers. And then as we grow, it's like we get to develop, we get to see 
you know, what, which flower am I, you know? Mm, And so to not compare yourself like, oh, I really look at that sunflower. I'm not a sunflower. You know, I mean, while you're a rose that's blooming, but we have to look within and be excited that we are different and our spiritual growth is perfect for us and, and is just as beautiful as yours or someone else's. You know, I thought yes. you're just talking about communication. Um, you know, after my dad died, his body died, whatever, um, mm-hmm. I, I did believe in the afterlife, but I was really tremendously grieving and I wanted so much to get like really something you know really Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tangible that I knew he was Mm -hmm. there now I am one of the people that I saw mediums and did so many great things and even though I got that confirmation it only lasted for a little while and then I kept searching again like did that really happen but what I did one (laughs) night what I did one night is I said dad if you're with me because I really felt like he was but I said you know just give me you know like something that like I wouldn't have thought of, give me some thoughts that like I know that aren't coming from my mind. And Rachel, it was so cool because I just quieted my mind. And then I got these random pictures of things my dad and I did together really fast, like a slideshow of all these great images. Now, if I were to think of those things, I'd really have to go, okay, yeah, when I was eight years old, I guess we did do this or whatever. But, you know, just from a pencil um, holder that I carved for him, like all these different things. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. there's no way my mind could have just done that that fast. You know, so that was yep. just a little special thing that I had that I'm like, okay, Pop, you're with me. I love that. I love that. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Now, you mentioned, you know, it, it might not come as a different voice. How, you know, if you're training somebody to tap mm-hmm. into their own spirituality, like how might somebody come through to us? So they they come through in the way that's like the most effective and efficient way for you. So it's kind of that know thyself. And like if you see, if you are a uh, very visual person, if you have mm-hmm. a colorful imagination, if I'm talking and you're seeing pictures about it while I'm talking, like if I say, oh, and there was a smokestack, and in your mind you're seeing a little smokestack. That's me. Or a little, mm-hmm. okay. So then you're, and, and that makes perfect sense for what you just described, that your father would choose to use your clairvoyance and give give you little images. Now, a lot of people, typically, if if we're working with that, and they, the thing with multidimensional senses is they overlap. They're multidimensional. Okay, you can't separate out one dimension, two dimension, three dimension. They, they overlap and they're integrated into each other. And so, like when I teach people how to see auras or something, they typically think I'm just going to see a color around someone. Mm-hmm. But a lot of people feel auras. They, some people taste auras. Some people have a sense of hearing auras. It's just so it's an energetic resonance. So there's a sense of having to utilize all of your and and that's called synesthesia also, like the blending of senses even in with our typical just sight and hearing and sound using a different type of sense to describe it. So you have to keep yourself open to that. But I would go first to the way, if you if you know you're an artist, you probably have a tendency to go t- more towards clairvoyance and images. Right. And so trying to validate the things that come through. Typically, we are so used to our psychic senses, our non-physical senses, that we, we brush them aside. It's like we're constantly seeing images in our head. And so we don't validate that those are important. You know, isn't that interesting? Yeah, yes, seeing or it's, feeling because I, I think even, you know, if you say think of your mother, you know, some people right. like I'll see my mom's face. Some people will hear her voice. Some people will feel what it's like to be with her. Right. Or they'll right? taste the cookie that she always makes. Yes. Okay. They'll smell it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And so, yes. And and so then I would say go that route. It's the same thing when I teach people about meditation. It's It's got to be a form that's relevant for you, that feels you already know this. You already know how you connect. You are always connected in that way. So it's just a sense of knowing and validating those aspects of yourself. And the more you utilize them, just like any muscle, the more, the stronger they get, the more you're able to identify and kind of pick up the subtleties of the images. Like, I love that explanation that you just gave about you sitting and getting very, very pointed with your focus. Like, I, Dad, I want you to communicate now. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you got very clear. 
And essentially that's what we're doing as a psychic or when we're practicing, we're getting very pointed with our directional energy and saying, I want to connect now in this moment, this is what's happening. And so we tend to see like, especially if you're used to that, those images all the time playing in your head and you don't know how to validate one over the other. It's almost like a constant slideshow. When someone's talking, you don't even realize the slideshow's going. Or when you're trying to make a decision, you're seeing all these possibilities that you think could happen or might happen, or, and you, you don't give any sort of like importance to what you're seeing, or you're not actually sitting in a space where you're able to translate what you're seeing. You just bypass it. Yeah, I think it's so important for us to, if we're interested in this, explore it. Um, yes. Because even yourself and uh, other people you know it's something where we have to develop we have to sit and there might be the innate ability but you know I, I don't know why I'm getting all these images today <laughs> who's putting them in my mind but like I just have to share you know I got this image of somebody who's either like a wine taster right. or you know if you do the blind taste tests on like a soda right you know right like, I don't have a fine palate that I could taste what is a, you know, uh, 1888 Chateau Margaux versus, <laughs> um, you know, something else. Now, I do like wine, but I'm, I'm not like that. My palate's not that clear. But I think right. just to compare that to this, like the more that you step into it and the more you start working with it, you're going to start feeling, okay, what is my imagination and what are those kind of psychic hits and but it takes something proactive from us. Like it just doesn't appear, ta-da, that you wake up tomorrow and have it. So I like that we have to put in um, a little action ourselves. You know, yes. that's a good thing. Yes. And that's just your intentional energy, um, our intentional energy and focus. And so, like I said, that film may be going you know, the film strip may be playing in our head, but it takes us sitting down and kind of getting to a space where we are focused on it. Okay. And just like in any moment, and this is kind of another practice when, when I do remote viewing practice with people, typically if I, when I remote view, it's like you drop into a moment and you like, you drop into a body, you drop into it, you know, take where you are right now. If somebody just dropped into that moment if we were just giving that, given that scene, there's a million things we could focus on in that moment. A million. <laughs> yeah. There's infinite. I mean, I could look up. I could look sideways. I could look at your feet. I could try to feel what is my body feeling? What did I just eat? What, in, you know, what's going on in the mind? And there's stuff all over the room that I'm in. Yes. Like there's and, all kinds of things you can pay attention to. Yes. Yeah. And that's just visual. Then I could listen to the sounds. I could go smells. I could go. I could. And then if I get into your mind space. I could look, what are you thinking? I could go anywhere. And so the sense of what is relevant and what I want to give my pointed focus to is where all the energy kind of starts to channel into. And so learning to kind of navigate that, or like you said, just giving a very pointed focus to this is something I want to grow, or this is something I want to learn about. It's like, then everything rushes to show that to you. It's not that it's not there. You may be in the room, but if you're not looking at something, it's just peripheral. Mm, I like it. Our time's going by quick as it normally does. I'd like you to um, brag about yourself a little bit <laughs> in a sense that, no, if we, if we went to your website, which is themodernshaman.net, like what kind of services do you offer? What are you passionate about teaching? Like, you know, because I think a lot of these interviews, well, they're definitely most of them entertaining, but, you know, some people, even myself, it strikes a nerve. Like, I want to find out a little bit more about this. Like, how would you suggest that we get interested? I know certainly we can go yes. to your Facebook. Um, and it, if you're listening to this uh, episode on YouTube, just below in the description, I've got a link to Rachel's website, her Facebook um, page where she does the live um, live sessions and also your YouTube channel. And, you know, anything else we could find. But now, you know, we want to find out more. What, what do you offer? Well, um, my website's pretty much the hub for all of that. Like, um, and it's themodernshaman.net. It's not .com. Cause <laughs> people get tripped up with that. It's themodernshaman.net. Um, and, you know, I, I am passionate about a lot of things, but I mostly am passionate about humanity and what that's taken me where I am right now 
is I've, I'm feeling, I love doing sessions, but I'm, I feel a lot of my purpose has turned into teaching and really empowering people. And it sounds funny, but I even say this when I sit with people that it's a goal of mine to get you to a place where you don't need me right? because you really don't. It, you know, to feel like you're so freaking connected that you have constant access just as easily as I do. And you're, you trust your own connection enough that you don't need someone else's outside validation for it. That is a incredibly divinely empowered place to be, to feel, to live from that space, to know how to make your decisions in total alignment with your highest vibrational self. I mean, just... I have a passion for that. <laughs> I can <laughs> hear it. Yep, 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 yep. Well, I think medium so, readings, you get it's like, you know, teaching someone to fish or giving them a fish. You know, you can yes. certainly give somebody a fish. But teaching them yes. to explore and to to do this and to tap into their own, yeah, abilities. Yes. Awesome. Yes, 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 yes. And so that's, I have a lot of my focus right now on that. I'm starting a new teaching series in January. I do them. There's, there's a three-month series, and there's a new one starting. We just finished, uh, and I had master-level graduates in December, and so we're starting a new series in January, and there's three levels, and I teach workshops um, online, so you can live stream it anywhere in the world That's while great I'm news. teaching it live. Good, yes. good, good, good. Um, I added that last year and it's been a huge, I actually have more people tune in online than I do in person. I offer it in person at the same time. So there's people sitting and, and in person working through it and doing the partner activities. And then we're also doing it live streaming online at the same time. And I partner you up with other people that are live streaming. And so that's a, great. Yes. It's, it's very interactive. If, if you can't tell, I make you walk the walk. <laughs> yeah. Now, if somebody couldn't make one of them, is it recorded mm -hmm. so that they can replay it and stuff like that? It is. Okay. Yeah. So, but the, the, there's partner activities. There's a lot of interaction. Um, and anyways, I'm, I'm very passionate about those workshops because I feel like, you know, they've been an ongoing thing. Uh, I channeled a lot of the curriculum, but they've, they're just, um, I, again, I just feel like there's, it's so important for people to feel like they have a sense of their own empowerment and their own understanding of themselves. This yes. is your own connection. These are your, uh, ancestors. These, this is your form of feeling confident living in a universe that's a multidimensional universe, you know, and how to handle that and how to handle these fears that they become very visceral and, and physical in, in sense, but they're also um, very non-physical and just like love. You know, there's, there's aspects to love that are very physical and there's aspects of love that are very non-physical and learning how to integrate those into your life, having a sense of control or understanding a lot of it, you know, that phrase that we fear what we don't know. A lot yes. of it is just learning and, and no matter where you are in the spectrum, I mean, I have working psychics that take my psychic development classes. <laughs> so, and just to further and deepen, um, what they know to be true. And then there's others that are, you know, never, you know, just kind of curiosity and jump in. So we start with level one, which is the foundational, but I would just encourage anyone that's feeling intuitively led, um, and getting that nudge to check it out. That's on the website. And what would I click um, on? I'm on, actually on your website. Okay, so go to Ascension Academy, which okay. that that's kind of the hub for all the teaching materials and all the okay. teaching that I do. And then if you go to classes and workshops, uh -huh. it's on there and okay. um, the January start. And it's in person here in San Antonio, Texas. I'm doing this this series in San Antonio. And then, like I said, it's live online, uh, live streaming at the same time. I'm so proud and of you for doing all this. Thank you. I, I, it's been a, you know, you know how life is. It's like, it's been a I do. ebb and flow and things yeah. have, have been progressing and, um, and I, I do love it. Like I, there's nothing better than seeing someone stand in their divinity, you know, to stand in their connection and feel personally empowered in it. I just love it. I'm just, I feel like that cosmic mother that's just like, yes, you go, baby. <laughs> yeah, oh, you're so funny. And it's interesting because I know 
for me, like when you were telling your story, I'm like, oh, I would have loved to have grown up with a, you know, dad who was Cherokee and I, you know, learn these things. But we have to trust that wherever we yes. are today is exactly where we're supposed to be. So it doesn't matter if you're listening to this and you're 19 years old or you're 87 or 95 so years old. It's the perfect time for you. And, That's so uh, true. Right? I had a 78 year old person in my last master class. So, Great. yes, and she is a working healer. She's been healing and doing Reiki for years and years and years. <laughs> yeah, you never so, know. And even some of us that are older, I am now in my 50s, um, but I found out like some of the the greatest geniuses in the world, you know, things didn't open up till their 50s, 60s, sometimes even 70s. So don't anybody out there who's listening think, you know, too bad this didn't happen sooner. Like this is the perfect time if you're interested. So if you're it's interested. so true. It's so oh. true. And it has always been there all along. Yeah, it's it not has. new to you. It's just that we're bringing it up, you know. Love it. Rachel, anything you want to share that I didn't ask you that you're like, oh, I forgot to mention this or I should mention this or anything the shaman within you is guiding you to say because um, mm. we are recording well, this around the holiday season too. And Yes. Uh, and just, just – Mm, I love that, that you just brought that up. Well, well, there were a lot of things coming through. I, on my website, I'm just going to send everybody there. Like if anything that I've said that resonates or that you're like, I'm interested, just go there and poke around, you know, because I, I also travel a lot and I do a lot of events uh, and short seminars and then work different. Um, I'm doing a Conscious Life Expo, which is a big one. That's a big um, one. Yeah. Yeah. In LA, uh, in February, I'm also doing one, um, in Carlsbad, California in later January. So there's a lot of, I'm traveling and you can always like check that out. And then also like I'm doing a live stream this weekend that's focused on relationships and how to integrate spiritual growth into your relationships and how those kind of, I mean, that's a biggie for a lot of people. Yes, like when it they is. Start, start integrating their psychic gifts or start saying to their loved ones that this is going on, um, how that interacts with relational energy and, and how that impacts that. So I'm, I'm around, and if anything has resonated, I would just encourage you to kind of play around on my website and find something that really sticks with yeah. you. And I do like that you're a giver. I mean, we all need to charge money for certain things to have an income to support our life and our families and things like that but you're like me there's so much that you give freely on your youtube and on facebook and stuff so thanks i well i wanted to ask you you got voted as um 2016's best female medium in the world how did that yeah. come about with paranormal <laughs> awards world Society. paranormal awards yeah i know that blew me away um yeah so every year they Basically, they, there's a process. Someone nominates you, and they go through all the nominees, and they uh, they call you. They ask all these questions. They call all these people that have had sessions with you, and they ask all these questions, and they narrow it down to the top five based on all of their inquiry, and then um, people vote. Basically, they put it out, and they vote for, I think there's a three-month voting period, and uh, last That's so year. so cool. Uh, yeah, so I know that blew me away, and it's such a heavy title, like in the world. You know? <laughs> well, that was 2016. You know, we're going into 2018. You don't have to let your ego hold on to that. You're pretty good, though. <laughs> I'm proud of you. That's, I love it. Yeah, it's really great, and and it, it, what's behind it all is your commitment to make a difference and to really help people heal and get to know themselves. Yes. Well yes. done, sister. Thank you. And so, you as well thanks. for doing what you're doing. Thank you. So just a reminder to you who's listening, Rachel's website is themodernshaman.net. So in closing, I want to say, Rachel, thank you for being our guest today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I loved it. Uh, lovely. I, lo I love, love, love doing these <laughs> shows. I do. I, I appreciate you too who is listening right now, whether you're yeah. in your car or sitting at home or out for a walk or whatever it is you're doing. What's happening is even though we are not physically together, I think you feel it. You are connected to something so much bigger than yourself. And you're, yeah. you know, I love you. Rachel loves you. Um, yes. You don't have to be physically together to be part of this family. So I really want to thank you for taking the time to listen. Mm -hmm. And as a reminder, all past episodes are available on we don't die radio.com. And then you can get the link to find them on YouTube or iTunes or wherever else you wish to listen. Um, just 
uh, also free gifts. This is the holiday season. I don't know when you're listening to this. It could be non-holiday season sometime in the future, but we're actually recording this mid-December in 2017. And on my website, we don't die radio.com. Uh, I've got a couple of free things for you. One is my audio of how to survive grief. And it, in, especially coming up to this time of the year, it's tough, very tough when we, think of those who have gone before us so that it really helps with our frame of mind and so I give you that and then I've got a a real fun PDF file 19 reasons that I believe in the afterlife and uh, some of them are pretty mind-blowing but they're real and they're things that I've experienced so that's there for you and then also I mention um, you can read the first few chapters of my book and the truth is between you and me and Rachel it's the whole book (laughs) it is the whole book in PDF file so my gift to you yeah, yeah. And if you're interested in physically meeting some like-minded people um, like like us, check out the afterlifesymposium.org. What a great group of people. And we're actually starting to create uh, groups in our own neighborhoods that are that we can get together with, go for coffee with, and awesome. we can talk about this. Yeah, it'll take some time as anything does, but you know, we have people involved with this worldwide and we're trying to make the connections so in closing uh, just a huge thank you again to Rachel and thank you to you our listener for being with us this past hour my name is Sandra Champlain I have been your host on We Don't Die Radio and I do believe that life is an education for the soul and that your life here on earth is important so I really want to thank you for listening and we'll see you soon <music>